Warning, the following presentation contains cold, hard truths that might change the way you think. Viewer discretion won't do you any good now. Fix the fucking game. Fix the game. Fix the game. Fix the fucking game. Fix the game! Fix the game! I fucking get it! I'm pressing control. Fuck! Man, I love this shirt. You know, I think the only thing more difficult than playing from software's newest game is just saying there's a new game from From Software. Yes, I have been here with you playing Elden Ring this whole time. Now, I know there's a whole lot of videos about this game made by people who are actually good at it. The important items you'll need is XX Decay with a seal to cast it with. Shabriz Woe and Mimic will help here as well. Before going in, I cast Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength. But if there was any chance of me being considered a game reviewer ever again, I knew I had to complete this 200 hour life destroying gaming experience. Elden Ring is such an achievement in game development. It is something every gamer should experience, but not one that every gamer should play. Tilt your head in intrigue now. This is a typical From Software release, and probably the largest Dark Souls-esque game that we've seen yet. If you are watching this video and actually don't know what Dark Souls is, I'd be happy to define it right here for you. Hard. Now back when Dark Souls first came out, that was probably during the era where I was playing the least amount of video games. For me, it was more the uh, doing mushrooms era. And personally, I give the Soulsborne series an F for forget it. When I found out that Elden Ring was written by George R.R. R. Martin, I said, all right, there's two things I'm not a fan of and couldn't care less about. Having not seen a single episode of Game of Thrones, or ever having finished a Souls game, I thought nobody has less business playing this game than I do. And this is one of the most incredible games I have ever played. This is the new Skyrim. What the fuck is Elder Scrolls gonna do now? Bethesda is done. It's over. This is up there, you know what I mean? Breath of the Wild, Red Dead 2, whatever you think the best game ever is, put this on the list. The graphics are stupid. The art direction is impeccable. The combat is one big ball of holy shit. The open world is brilliantly laid out and ripe with exploration. This is an adventure that is impossible to forget. Mainly because the game is harder than this fossilized dinosaur turd, which is also one of the weapons in this game. As with other games made by From Software, getting hit in this game is like being in a car accident followed by a massive hospital bill. And dying in this game is like having your entire bank account drained. This game is so hard that when you die, you actually have to start from the beginning of the first Dark Souls game, and play through the whole saga just to get back to where you were. This game is so hard that when you die, the game deletes itself from existence, and you have to reprogram the game yourself, learn the Unreal software, release the game on your own, just to continue the game. This game is so hard that when you die, a guy actually comes to your house and shoots you and kills you in real life. The premise of this game is simple. You die. I spent most of this game shitting my pants. I'd be creeping around corners while carrying way too many runes and constantly debating whether I should go grind or not. It was a weird mix of stressful and exciting. It's like walking around a bad neighborhood with your entire life savings in a neon fanny pack. Now, the internet was not about to take this game's difficulty at face value. It got together and said, no Elden Ring, we will break you. Whether it's cheap farming exploits or just an entire mod for easy mode, plenty of people have made it pretty clear. 
that they don't know how to play this game. Now, I am not saying that I'm good at this game by any means. Just the fact that Horfrost Stomp appears on the screen throughout most of this video should give you an idea of how good I am. But I do know that this is a massive game with a shit load of helpful items and abilities that the game does not tell you about. And if you do take advantage of all the systems at your disposal, the game does become slightly easier. Now, there's something I want to address here. This game has become a sort of cock measuring contest. I mean, look, I highly respect all the speedrun videos out there where people try to beat the game without dying once. These are incredible. But that is not how normal people should approach Elden Ring. I didn't play this game to prove anything. I played it to enjoy it normally like any other game. But I do think this game is so fucking legendary. Naturally, it should inspire the most insane completion methods and speedrun attempts imaginable. People like Elden Ring videos. You'll usually see comments on these videos like, this was a brilliant story full of overcoming adversity, or gee, this is a really epic video or something you're not known for but would love to see more of. There will be no brilliant story in this video. I didn't turn my experience of playing this into a 400 page novel. I fucking love this game till no end. But this was one big blur of death and tears. And this will be just as, if not more idiotic than all my other entries. So let's finally review this game. Elden Ring is a game that is totally open world from pretty much the get-go. You start with nothing but useless tinker toys. You're weak, you're shitty. You literally cannot take a walk in a park without getting anally turned inside out. But slowly, you find weapons. You start leveling. You get your runes, get your sacred tears, your golden seeds. You upgrade, and then you realize it's still too fucking hard. So you cheat a little bit. You squeeze a couple of exploited runes out of the game. And then you're... sort of better? Eventually your task becomes clear. You must collect enough great runes to form the Elden Ring and claim the Elden Throne to restore order in the lands between. To do this, you will explore dungeons, caves, mines, ruins, cities, bathrooms, toilet bowls, massive underground regions, and face some of the most disgusting, horrendous freaks of nature that we've ever seen in gaming. Yep, this game has incredible boss battles. They're always doing weird, gross things, removing their limbs, adding other limbs, morphing into some kind of Siamese, you know basket case shit. A lot of people have told me personally that they're afraid to play this game because they heard it contains the hardest boss battles known to man. Most of the mandatory bosses in the game have some kind of super cheesed, easy way of beating them. I think some of these could be intentional hidden weak spots. Others are definitely bugs. But hey, if I could make it through these guys, so can you. I'm fucking terrible. What I really had a hard time with is how confusing some of their names are. You got Godric the Grafted, Godfrey the First Elden Lord, and then Godfroy the Grafted. The worst is confusing Melina with Millennia. I was talking to some friends and one person was like, you killed Melina? What? But she's so nice. Now, one thing that also might intimidate people about this game is the sheer amount of items there are. Holy moly, dude. I feel like at some point they gave up on categorizing some of these items. I don't know, I'm constantly getting an item and then being like, what fucking category is that in? <laughs> is that a talisman or a consumable? I don't even remember what it was called now, shit. What am I even looking for here? You'll want to save everything until you know what everything does. For example, perfume bottles are important but really finite and hard to come by. 
So don't go using them willy-nilly on shit you don't even need. You'll at least want that blood boil aromatic thing that savant dude was mentioning earlier. Now, I think the most successful aspect of Elden Ring is the open world itself. For a game of this size, there is a noticeable, refreshing lack of hand-holding. This is not one of those follow the waypoint, boring bullshit experiences that we've grown very sick and tired of. This game forces you to explore and pay attention to your surroundings. And with such a massive world to cover, it's surprising that with almost no direction, you still feel like you're always finding new things. Every area contains different enemies, and I never saw too much of one enemy. The game always keeps it fresh. My favorite level in this game is probably Elfail Brace of the Halig Tree. It looks incredible, and the enemies really make you work for it. And they also look incredible. My least favorite level in this game is anything with this chariot of death thing. Some sick ass motherfucker came up with this thing. Holy crap, dude. Every time you enter a new area in this game, your jaw just falls off. I remember when I first saw Altius Plateau. This was the moment when I realized, yeah, I'm breaking up with my girlfriend. I'm telling you, this game takes so long to beat and it will take up so much of your time. If you're in a relationship or are trying to start one, you're gonna, you're gonna have to make some big decisions here. It took me 140 something hours to beat this game. I took my sweet time with it, which really means I grinded for 140 hours. Don't judge me. I have a long ass health bar. My health bar is so long, it goes off the screen and bleeds into the neighbor's TV. And they're knocking on my door and asking me, hey, do you know what this red line is on my screen? And I say, sorry about that. I really over grinded an Elden Ring. If you see a player that has a health bar this long, it does not mean that they're good at this game. It just means they did a pathetic amount of grinding. Speaking of pathetic, let's talk about you invaders. All you people who invade other players, your penises are so microscopic. I don't have a second part to that. Just, your penises are microscopic. It's always funny when you're playing in a group and someone tries to invade you and just fails miserably. Oh really? Yeah? Hmm. Bet you're regretting this move. Yep. Sorry, Perry the Prisoner. And now you're gonna die wearing that stupid little hat. How does it feel? I was really disappointed when I found out that a lot of these invaders that I've killed were not real people, but NPCs. Well then, I'm just gonna go cross a few names off of a list here. Also, while we're on the subject of pathetic, let's talk about the summoning debate. Elden Ring lets you summon other players into your world to help you get through difficult moments in the game. And some people consider this the unpure way of playing the game. I didn't start summoning other players for help until Malaketh the Black Blade. And not because I didn't need to or because I was trying to beat the game solo. That's just how long it took me to figure out how to summon. And I really don't feel bad summoning people either because this game is a joy to play with other people, especially the fight with Millennia. There's nothing like getting her in that triangle of pain. It's like we're all doing a dance or something. I don't know, there's something really magical about fighting these bosses in co-op and experiencing these insanely epic moments with other people. And the best part about it is that the game immediately boots people out of your world after they help you finish a boss. It's like the game knows that I only want to use these people for their talents and not have to hang out with them afterwards. But the co-op in this game is equal parts impressive as it is frustrating. It's basically just meant for the bosses, I think. You can try to play the rest of this game with people, but it's honestly a giant pain in the ass. You can't use your horse, you can't fast travel, can't enter other areas when you're with other players. To do these things, you need to continuously exit and re-enter the other player's world. 
The worst is not being able to use a grace point. I'm sorry. It's like not being able to use the bathroom while you're at work and having to go home and come back every single time. But you know, I have grown to appreciate the signs left by other players that literally litter this game. At first I found these ugly as shit. It's like people just left a bunch of glowing white turd logs everywhere. But this world is so huge that sometimes it's nice to see that someone else has been in this same spot. This might save you some wasted minutes here and there. And also, people do some hilarious things with these signs. Look at this. People were riding their horse way out there, seeing how far they could jump. Like some kind of pole vaulting or bocce ball minigame. That's really cute. That's really cute. Speaking of random things, this game has some of the best object breaking I've ever seen. I feel like the physics of broken pieces of wood drastically outweigh the physics of horse traversal and platforming. I know, that was a weird segue. I don't know. I wouldn't say this game has clunky movement per se, but sometimes my character just goes berserk. They'll go in directions I didn't even think anyone would conceive of going in. It's not great. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've died more times in this game from falling than from being killed by an enemy. This is a fall-heavy game. More than half the game takes place on skyscraper crossbeams like that old photo from the 30s. I don't know, dying by falling just leaves you with no dignity. At least when you get killed by an enemy, it's like, whoa. I got ripped apart by something very cool looking. I am not as mad. I will not lie to you. There is a reason you haven't seen a review from me in ages. I just haven't been that impressed with gaming lately. There hasn't been anything recently that makes me think, wow, I need to lend my voice to that. This was the game I needed right now. If a game doesn't destroy my entire life, I have no interest. Elden Ring is such a work of magic that it restored my faith in gaming. The game is far too time consuming for most sane people, but maybe that's a huge part of the magic. Ever since the first second, I could not put this thing down. I needed to witness everything in it, just so I can behold the extent of these developers' imaginations. It just has that pull on you. This is a total gateway into Dark Souls, which I'm told is one of the greatest gaming franchises ever. And Elden Ring didn't just help me understand why Souls games are good. It also reminded me why I play video games. By the end of this game, I did become a dragon-slaying, god-killing, anti-Christ, bludgeoning, professional demon fucker. And I think I can finally take on the rest of the Soulsborne series. From software, here I come. I'm never playing these games.